we go. <laughs> is going viral even possible? Hint, yes. <laughs> I should say, spoiler alert. Yeah. I'm going to just go ahead and spoil it right now. Yes, it is possible. And hello, my name is Tessa. I'm a marketing strategist. And this is Kai, who's a business coach. And today we're talking about going viral. And I what I really want to... I want to stress is that it's a formula and we, we actually go through this with people in our upcoming event and it's, I'm just going to say, stay till the end so you can get the link. It is, we have guest passes available. And if you think you're a good fit, we'll share a guest pass with you. And if we think you're a good fit too, do, do, do you want the right people in the room? But today yeah. we're going to talk about some of those ways to go viral or help that yeah. process of going viral without making it too stressful for you. So Kai, can you take it away from here? Yeah, well, we can't share everything today, but we will share a few things that you guys can actually start to do and really think about. And let's really first before we dive in, um, you know, let's really talk about what going viral means. I think everybody has this idea that, okay, I got to watch the trending reels, get the right trending audio, or I got to, you know, do this cat video or whatever it is. And then all of a sudden I'm going to go viral. So it, when we talk about going viral, yes, you can force a post to go viral, but really all that going viral means is that you're getting a lot of likes. It's being seen by a lot of people, all of that stuff, right? So the likes are, it's getting shared, all the stuff. And I, and Here's what I will also say about going viral is it is if you aren't ready for it or you haven't actually done it the right way, it's not going to matter. So, yay, your post got a million views. And now what? <laughs> so right. That is really what we're going to be talking about at the event. It's a free event. But anyways, I think that's really where it kind of kills me is people are looking to go viral because they want to be seen, but they don't mm. actually have a strategy. So somebody's going, getting seen for like some type of funny cat video and they're <laughs> like this business coach and it like is so misaligned. So you're bringing in the wrong audience, number one, and then you don't have a process right after that. It's like you went viral and then it's like, okay, now what? And no it, process well, whatsoever. I've seen yeah. more people that said I accidentally did this and then there was no results yes. at the end of that, right? Yeah. And you can't, it's it's hard to go backwards and yes. think of that logical path for people. Yeah. For sure. So it's it very from, intentional. It is very intentional. Let's think of it from like something that everybody knows, right? So I think we think of going viral and you think of like, okay, um, a post, right? But it, you can go viral in a lot of different ways. So think of, remember when Oprah had her show and she used to do like her favorite, whatever, like her favorite book, her favorite item, and everybody would get it, right? It would be featured on Oprah's favorites. And if you, uh, there was, I forget who it was. There's one author, like all the authors who would come on or sh they would be featured as a favorite, their books would go off the shelf. It would be crazy. But there was one author who came on and she wasn't prepared yet. So she came on, her book was still in process, like she hadn't finished it yet, and she missed the opportunity because by the time she was done, she didn't have that leverage anymore. So really preparation is key and understanding what's going to happen after you go viral. And I'm not going to keep digging into that, but I just no, I think it's really think about important. that because <laughs> it is important. Like it's not just about like, hey, I'm going to for because you can force a post to go viral. Yes, you can. Um, it's not the same thing as like I posted this one day and I woke up the next day and there are a million views. That's not the same thing. That is luck. OK, that's, luck. that's timing <laughs> luck. There is an element of that yeah. for sure. Well, you can force a post to go viral. Yes. Where well, I think. I have to yeah. just say, you said where you could put fo force a post to go viral. That's actually what businesses do and you don't even see it. And then you, you kind of get hints of it when people say, um, this went viral and I'm just reposting it now so I can see what happened. Well, they're really doing the viral tactics right yeah. there. Hey, Sean, good to have you here. Yeah. So we're going to go through some tips for you on ways to go viral and to put well, some thought about, on. right? Yeah. yeah, things to think about. <laughs> yeah. So we don't have a ton that we're going to share today, but I did pick out the ones that I thought were the most important right now because what everyone does, and I, you know, I used to do this in the past, is like, okay, I got to put up a post. And so I'm going to put up this post or whatever it is, right? And so we're putting up these posts, but they're actually not high quality. 
Um, and I don't mean high quality as in like it was, had, uh, you know, a beautiful like photograph that could be blown up and it's not going to get pixelated. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is high quality and it has to be relatable. High quality, mm -hmm. meaning I didn't just pick any random post that happens to be in my genre and then post it up there. And I'm like, oh, okay, that was a great post and it is relatable. No, <laughs> high quality, meaning that it needs to resonate with your audience, the right audience. Okay. Again, if you're a business coach and you're getting, uh, you know, people to come to you for cat stuff, like we really need to think cats about that. Viral, to it gonna, it though. Cats can go viral, but it doesn't yeah. help your business at all. <laughs> but there is a way to do it. So I remember there's this like dog. I don't know if you guys know this dog on like Instagram and he like, I think he's like a little mini poodle or something. And he wears these glasses and has like, it's a girl, I think, and has like this little sweater vest. And then they'll show her at the computer, <laughs> like working. Hey. And then they'll put stuff. So it's relatable. So if you love dogs and you're looking for business info, it makes sense. But if you're just like posting like the funny dog videos and then you're like, then expecting that all these people who like this video wants business content is completely different. So you got to understand what are you actually, what's the end goal? We always start with this. What is the end goal and who are those people right now? Those people, now you think about, okay, what's the first post that's going to attract those people. It still might be humorous. It still might be, you know, relatable. It's going to be relatable content, but it has to be aligned to where you're getting them. Right. You're not just reaching for one million views of any random person. You want one million views of the right people. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And that's really what it comes down to. A hundred percent. Well, Are and you know, you're going to say something. Sorry, just I, I am. I am on the content side. So, you know, it's relatable. I think Kai's talked about this before, but a lot of what goes viral is shareability. And I don't know if you're going to talk about that. Yes. later. No, let's add that one in right now. So shareability is what creates a viral um environment right yeah. <laughs> because if if somebody is if you're asking for somebody to tag someone if it's like tag the person that you know hates scary movies but you'd love to show this to or, and you've talked about that before right for a movie trailer instead of just having a movie trailer they're saying like share with the person that would this would scare the bejeebers out of you know yeah. it or funny content gets shared um you know things that are uh, relatable, like you said, but it's, it's, it built into it, asking them to share, asking them to tag someone, asking it to, you know, to, to be dispersed, or it's just, you know, a lot of people, and we've seen this where they have inspirational quotes, inspirational quotes are great. Um, in that people do share them and that is shareable content, but it can't be your only strategy, obviously, yeah. you know, no lead back to the business, but make sure it's shareable and humor is great. Humor is a way to connect with your audience. If you can make someone laugh, they will remember you. That's for sure. So, you know, humor, yeah. awe and empathy are some of the things that you can in include in your posts to help yeah. go to go viral. Yeah. And so when we talk about shareable, I think it's so important. And it is, you know, if you look at a lot of people, like think of the people who you follow and think about the people that you love their their feed, right? Wherever that feed is, uh, really understand, like, I want you to go out and study what it is that they're posting that you love so much. You probably have saved it or shared it. Right. So it's something that either meant something to you, like, oh, it's a recipe, for example, or a place that you want to visit or a product you want to buy. So you saved it. Or if it's a product you want to buy, maybe you sent it to your boyfriend or husband and like, hey, Christmas is coming up. Right. Like there are reasons that you share or save. So what are the reasons that you're sharing or saving? Because number one, saving is a good mm -hmm. um it's a good metric that tells us, okay, what I'm putting out there is valuable, but sharing is what it's like word of mouth via yeah. Instagram, right? When you think of sharing, that's word of mouth and it's spreading like wildfire. So I shared it with this person. They think it's funny. They share it with this person, or it can be inspirational. Oftentimes people share quotes, right? Mm -hmm. So really understanding what that looks like, but also if you study these people, like, Ed Milet, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of um, 
the other person, I can't think of their name, but there are certain people where if you go to their feed, there are certain things that they are known for. Right. And they do these posts. Well, Oh, uh, Gary V. Right. So oh, they yes. do certain posts. Well, maybe they're really good at reels. Maybe they're really good at, at carousels. Maha copy co is great at carousels. And so there are people who are really good at this one type of content. They're not getting busy. Like I got to figure out the trending reel. I got to. They have a type of content that they works well for them that people will share out save. And they do it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So really understand that because, you know, we're always taught like you got to do all of the things. It's not bad to try because you want to experiment. The omnipresent, the right. does, you know, <laughs> like you. But I'm saying, you know, you don't have to learn how to find a trending audio, do the reel, do the carousel, do the you like figure okay. out what works for your audience there's a learning curve too yeah, so anytime exactly. you try to do some of these new things it's gonna take time for you to figure it out <laughs> you know and to some extent you have to be moving with your audience you have to be yeah. growing your audience them when you lose momentum I think you talk about this all the time, but it's like pushing a rock, right? It's like you, once you get the rock going, it's going to be easier. So if there are things that are, that you can do content, that's easy content that doesn't take you, you know, days. I mean, with the carousels, like she doesn't want to be in front of video. That's okay. You know, or whoever's running it, right. They don't want to be in front of video. They're not letting that be the barrier that keeps them yeah. back. They're doing what they can and getting it going. So I think there's a huge, huge, yeah. uh, you, reason why you can just do some content but make it good content and make it align with where you want to go with your business so we have okay, that was that number was number one, one. and now and we got number two, two because it was create high quality relatable content number two was make it shareable oh, okay okay right? then we yeah. got two Right. So, and so three, you know, I just want to go back to number two before we hit number three and number two with the shareable. Like, so for example, we have a client right now, huge, uh, huge client, you know, they, we, they, we produce like 90 plus, um, uh, pieces of content for them every month. And, you know, the thing that we're figuring out and see, even though we can tell you all these things, there's still like Tessa said, there's a learning curve because all of our audiences are different. So now we're in the testing phase of carousels, right? But it's mm -hmm. testing what kind of carousel, what's going to be the thing that stops people. So there's always going to be a testing phase to figure out what is the audience, right? The people you serve, what are they looking for? Right. Mm -hmm. And so if we can figure out what they're looking for and we can, and we have to study all the content we're putting out, the reels, the, you know, what kind of views, what kind of shares, what are the metrics we're looking at? And then we can produce more of that, but there's still, it doesn't mean we're like, okay, they do really well at this and let's just stop. Like we're still exactly. testing other things just to be sure that we're giving it our best, right? That they are producing at their highest level. So I just want to make sure that we understand that. It's not like we just, okay, I got lazy. This is the one I'm only going to do because it's the easiest. And like, we still want to make sure that we're always testing because we need to be a little bit more like water than rock, right? Like rock oh, yeah. kind of <laughs> sink and stay. And then the water flows around them, but the water keeps moving towards that big body, right? Towards, towards the lake mouth, towards whatever it is. Whereas the rock, unless it gets really pushed very hard, right? It's probably not going to move. So we need to be more flexible and go with the flow, but also understand what lights you up right? Because yeah, yeah. you don't want to do content that is always draining either. And I got to tell you, me trying to find trending audios, that drains me. I'm never <laughs> going to do a video where I'm dancing unless I lost a bet. Okay. Like that's just what it's going to be. And I used to be a dancer. So it has nothing to do with that. That's just not my style of content. So I did not know this. I now know I feel like that. you have yeah. to do a dance video. <laughs> no, not unless I lose a bet. Oh maybe. my gosh. Okay. That's number hilarious. three. Hey, oh, sorry. I just want to say, Hey Maggie, thank you for watching us over on women helping women. We are broadcasting to several locations. So we love that you're here and let us know if you have any questions in the chat. Yes, <laughs> or hashtag indeed. live. So we know you're here. We have lots of great content. Okay. Number three. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're, I'll just dive in. Understanding yeah. your target audience is critical to I go feel viral. Like covered that, but yes. Oh, did you already cover that? No, we so didn't. we already we have three. We're already sharing <laughs> great nuggets about it. So 
I feel I, like we did, but it is a number three. It should have its own separate place for you all so you understand how important this is. <laughs> yes, it has to be. Well, we talk about your muse all the time and, you know, understanding their pain points, understand what life looks like, where if you were to look in a window right now at them, what are they experiencing? And how can you build content around that experience? Because it's going to be a lot easier to get their attention if you've got the right if you've got the right problem. I have talked to so many clients where they they assume it's this. You know, your plumbing mm -hmm. is um, is you know your house is flooded. Well, for a plumber to come, right? But maybe it's just that you've got a high water bill. I mean, that's a horrible example because like it's not motivating <laughs> enough. So Kai, give us an another example. I only say that because we had pipes break, and so I'm like, okay, I have a flood. I'm gonna deal with the situation. But go yeah. ahead and give an example more in the service based. <laughs> uh, for understanding your audience. Yes. Oh. Hmm. She just put me on the spot there. I know. Well, I love this. <laughs> so when I, Sean says in the, while you're thinking on that, he says she, he wants to also see the dance. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot bet, Sean. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm not a betting woman. So, you know, it's one of those things. Um, and so we do do a silent disco at the end of oh, every uh, show in case you guys are wondering. But anyways, go <laughs> so back to what. So are we saying what would it look like in terms of a service based business? Yeah, And you we can even go with one of our clients. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. So what I would say is for a service based business, if the end goal, like let's go back to plumbing. So if we if I'm a plumber. Right. And I want people like on the front end, I, I have to understand who my audience is. Now, let me just ask you something. Are you going to go to a plumbing page and just like it just for the heck of it? Like they're putting up posts and they're like, it's winter time. It's time to like, whatever your pipes it's like, nobody's like, Oh my gosh. Yes. I want to follow want this page forever. Right. <laughs> but we do understand that our audience you know, the people who are coming to us, like, who are those people? Are these like, is our person like the person who wants to DIY and they really only call us when it's a big deal? Then how do we help them with that DIY journey? And how do we help them really understand when is it time to go and actually hire a plumber? So mm -hmm. I might be doing educational posts. Maybe they're funny. Maybe they've got the plumber's crack. Maybe they're like, whatever it is, like depending on the style of my business and my business's brand personality will depend on how I show up on those educational posts. I see people who do, um, these posts and they are, they're like, you know, a dad, right? So it's like, here's your, the plumber dad coming to show you how to whatever. And then he goes yes. in and he shows you in his house. And for those of us who didn't really have that father figure, like I follow him because I don't know these things, right? And my husband's working. So sometimes I better know what I'm doing. So I follow him and I support his channel because it's more of like a, like, you know, like a dad type showing me how to do this I plumbing stuff it. that I can do. I so it. I think, and he has a ton of followers and people that follow his page. So you really have to understand just because you're a plumber does not mean you can't go viral. Doesn't mean you can't have oh, people who want to support your page. Right. So, but you I love that too. really have that perspective of who are you serving and how can you serve them well? And so many professional businesses, and I get it, like, we feel like we have to be buttoned up and maybe that's your person. That's okay too. But your person also enjoys a certain type of content. So you just have to figure out what does that look like? Um, right. so oh, I have to say one thing too, on that side, you know, you talked about the educational side. Here's how to do things. Mm -hmm. I think if you, <laughs> so the shock and awe <laughs> of what we talked about before is like a literal seeing what could happen if you didn't do preventative measures, yeah. right? So there is a little bit, especially in that plumbing pipeline or, you know, pipes break in the winter, like showing the experience that they could have yeah. <laughs> if yeah. they don't do X, Y, Z and make sure you go do X, Y, Z and you're giving valuable information that doesn't require your service yet, right? Oh so it's yeah, like, you know, it'd be a good wrap one for them that. Up. 
If there's any plumbers or anybody who service space in this space, what would be a great one is showing what's happening. So for example, in this one, like the pipes of burst, so showing the aftermath and like what, and kind of coming in from a like videotaping going into where the chaos is and then, and then reverse. Like, yeah. Reverse. And like oh, what I you could have done to prevent it and then showing yes. like the three different. And if I had thought like, okay, I've got to wrap this pipe up or I've got to, you know, put skirting around to this. Yeah. I mean, that, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So that's your audience. But then think about how do you then make that go viral, right? So then it might be, hey, share this with somebody who so they don't. Yeah. So they don't have this happen that you think needs this or your kids so yeah. they can know what to do because they or, love the yeah, house. <laughs> exactly. Share this with your friends who are renting so they don't have a big bill. Share this with your daughter who just moved into her first whatever. Share this with somebody who you know has had their pipes burst before pipes burst before so they're not doing this again like you can share it in so many different ways and then that's how we're forcing it to go viral is we're asking people to share but first it all starts back with number one creating high quality content that people want to share and that might take a little bit to create yeah. this one reel but i also want to challenge you to not think you have to create a ton of content when you yeah. create good content you can have less of it yes. or, you know, you do still, the more posts you have out there, the more likeliness. I mean, you only reach 4% of your target audience at any given time or of day when you post, right? So you do need some volume, but that good content can be reproduced or maybe think of a list of things that you can do for tips. And it's yeah. a different little mini tip, but you only record once. So we do a lot. We talk a lot about how to create um, an, a lot from a little. That's yeah. one of our big, mo you know, our motto or our tagline is, you know, struggle. Okay, go ahead, Kai. You're better at it. <laughs> the tagline. <laughs> uh, more money, less struggle. There we go. See, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm totally out of it today. They, but you can do more with less. And so what we really encourage you to do is, uh, well, follow us because we have a ton of information. So if you haven't hit subscribe, make sure you do save, share. If you know someone who needs to get more people in their business, you can go ahead and share this out. I know we have Sean Reed. Thank you so much for being here. And he says it's a really educational and fun broadcast. And Sean, like put your link in the chat because Sean does do a ton of video. And um, I love what he's doing. It's still keeping his, it's keeping his business a little bit secret because it's not fully launched, but he still captures your attention. So yeah. it's a fun one. And he's built his audience to 80. Yeah. Put it in the chat, Sean. I know you have all that information, but we will be back next week and we are changing the time soon. It won't be at 10 a.m. Eastern time forever. We are going to go to a later time because we do have Pacific time peeps and even Hawaii peeps that want to be able yeah, to come on yeah. and it's not 4 a.m. for them. Yeah. <laughs> so, so wait, uh, just one thing before we go um, and you can get all the links ready, but uh, you know, as we were talking about all of this, one of the things that I was thinking about is yes, a hundred percent, you should definitely produce quality content and make little pieces of it. And it could just be showing these pieces and all that stuff, right? It could be the same post and then you're showing bits and pieces. I know um, a Instagram person that I follow and I save all their stuff and I recommend all people to go to their stuff. And they probably have maybe 20 posts. That's it. And they maybe produce like one post a week if that right? Thinking 20 posts, they've been out for longer than a year now, right? So that's not even one post a week. And they do excellent because their posts are the type of posts that you're going to go back to over and over and over again. So it. just think about it from that perspective too. But the last one that we had was number four is consistency. Oh, I was in a you're like, I tell you, you're missing the most important one. Well, it is the most important. It, it, it truly is. It's it's consistency. So once you've tested, you've kind of figured out what people like, what is really resonating with people. Now it's time to be consistent, right? Mm -hmm. And keep producing that content. Because what happens is we get the, like, let's say we have a post go viral, we get, you know, the leads. And now we have people in our, in our nurture funnel, people are buying, right? We have that. And we've stopped producing this because we already have the people we want. And then, you know, what happens? What happens is that, okay, now I've serviced all these people and now I need business again. And I don't have anybody who's warmed up anymore. 
because I stopped doing the thing that was actually bringing them in. I have made this mistake. Let me tell you, I will forever preach don't do what I did because <laughs> then you got to start over again and it's exhausting because you're like, I already did this, right? And then it's like, well, I should have just kept doing it and it actually would have been so much more simple. And you have compound effects. So let's say that you are, you have all the compound of like, if I am, let's say we're really good at making reels. And so every, you know, week we have a reel. If I'm just doing it until I get a great reel and I stop, then maybe I stop after 50 reels. But if I'm doing it and I kept doing it, even after that, now I've got a hundred reels that people can go and binge watch, right? And fall more in love and really want to work with us, right? That's like what the compound effect does. If it's a podcast, for example, and you mm -hmm. keep producing the podcast, it's like Google search. So the podcast lives there as long as you're paying your bill for hosting and it lives there for people to find. And I still get people, it's now been three years coming into my inbox still to this day. Like, Hey, are you going to do another podcast? So really the, had I kept going, consider how many more people would have downloaded how many, right? So just think about that. Like, don't give up and be consistent. Even if your consistency is once a week. Yeah. Show up. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's it. just pick something, pick a, pick a time frame that you're going to do things in and do it. That's it. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned add the links and I do want to share a couple links with you. We do have an event coming up and um, I'm going to give you guys the guest pass because you're all special, but literally we are reaching out to people directly to give them access to this. However, I know this is going to our base and you guys are of course welcome. And we're also going to Women Helping w Women, which is in a, a place that we obviously appreciate everyone over there too. If you click on that, you are going to have to schedule a time with us because we do want to make sure it's a good fit and that you're going to show up because exactly. these are guest passes that we don't have a lot of. So don't wait. It is for everyone. It's not just ladies. Everyone can come that owns a business. Just want to make sure that you're own, you own a business and you want to be able to work in a collaborative environment and actually yeah. go into breakout rooms and talk about what you want to, you know, what you can do in your business to go viral. So yeah. if that you're is, not interested in that, then you probably yeah, need tell more know. Than one space or done for you. So just, <laughs> it's not bad. Like, don't feel it's bad about bad. it. It's so not bad. And either way, no. you'll chat with one of us because yeah. those, that will take you to a calendar booking where you can chat with us if that's not exactly what you need, which we have people who are like, I am not a done DIYer, right? Yeah. They're like, nope, not going to do it. I don't have time. I want somebody else to do this. Obviously we do that too, but sign up because spots are going fast. We have different events we can slot you into. So you don't even have to worry about what day it is at the moment. You just come do the call with us and we'll let you yeah. know what we can, what we, and it's a short call with no sales, no sales. So that's yeah, what I wanted to well. share with you all. And then um, Sean, oh, it's Sage right now over on Instagram. If you guys want to go check out Sage right now. And he's up to 113,000 followers because he's been consistent since the, since the moment I met him. He has consistently been building his audience. So I love that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kai, for helping with this conversation. And before I sign us off, I'm actually going to go get our music so you don't have to his oh, listen I to our to silent, silent disco. disco. We could do the silent disco. We'll see you all next week. Make sure you hit that bell to get reminders when we go live. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you this part of the silent disco. Yeah. Or we can put music on, but I can never remember which one is good. So we're just going to. They're all kind of like ethereal. They are. They are. It's kind of slow. Okay. Bye, everyone.